Hi, this is Penny Rumsey. Welcome to my training called Removing Your Buttons. Today we're gonna, um, I'm gonna share with you an article that I was learning with a Teaching Self-Government in my circles group. For those of you that are in my circles group, I wanted to get this out of me so I didn't have to take too much time when we discuss. Um, for anyone not in my circles group who might be watching this, um, you're welcome to come and learn with us as part of our Teaching Self-Government Circles. Um, this uh, training today, well, let me start over. I just wanted to share with you a little bit about myself. Um, I am a woman of faith, a mother of virtue, and a warrior of light. I am a scholar and I love learning. I'm a student of Teaching Self-Government and that's been since May of 2011 and I've had the privilege of working with Nicolene Peck for the past six months since March, or yeah, March of 2012. Um, I am also a student of Three Key Elements Trainers Academy, which is an awesome uh, class I'm doing. So right now I am practicing giving my message. So that's one of the reasons I'm doing this today. And another reason I'm doing this today is because I believe that every person can change the world as we learn, apply, and share. If you want to learn more about that, check that out on my website, victorykidsmom.com. I share a lot on there about how to live your mission and how to learn, apply, and share, and that's what I do. So that's why I'm doing this today. So um, I know it's Saturday morning, and I know that I don't have any makeup on right now. My kids just left with my husband to go wash some fire trucks this morning, so... I wanted to get this done before they come back and the house gets loud and crazy. So I was just sitting down um, learning, excuse me one second and grab my paper. Um, I was just sitting down learning in my circles article and um, this is an awesome article. It's called The Power of Self-Government. I love it. I was just learning from this and um, trying to think about how it applies in my own life and the information of what I'm going to do with it. So. Um, the thing that I'm noticing in this is uh, a lesson that's showing up to me right now in my life about buttons. And that's why this training today is called Removing Your Buttons. Nicolene shares in this article how with Teaching Self-Government, she did a show called World's Strictest Parents. And in this show, her son Quinn says to the, the sh on the show, he says, uh, she doesn't have any buttons. I tried long ago and she just doesn't have any anymore. And she shares that story in here about how she doesn't have any buttons. So I've been thinking about this button pushing idea and the reason why at least I have buttons. Um, one of the things that this talks about on the second page, it says the issue is always with us. It's, um, it's sharing a message. I'll just read it real quick so I can get my mind there. Once we realize we are right there in there is no backing down. It's talking about being in power struggles and how we have problems in our family. If we are right, that means everyone else is wrong. We do our research. We seek out all of the flaws in the other person's view. The issue is always with us. We live for the future victory and we feel it coming as we control or do we control. So this is talking about, about all about control and how we gain real power. Um, so the thing that hit me about that, I know it's kind of weird, but the issue is always with us. This is what I imagine, and I'll just draw you a picture real quick. I imagine that um, we, whether happy or sad, <laughs> uh, we all have issues. Well, um, at least I have issues. I'm not sure if everybody else does. Okay, so these issues are called buttons. And they're inside of us. Can you see this? So these buttons are inside of us. And when something happens to us, an experience goes through us, and something triggers one of these buttons, and then we have a reaction. Sorry, I'm off the camera. Um, and then that's when we have a, a negative thing happen in our lives. That we emotionally react and say, wah, 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 about this, the kids did this, and then we react... Um, it tells a story in the article, which is a really awesome example, actually, because it gives three different type of scenarios and ways that people react to um, their circumstances. It tells a story of 
one night, I'm guessing, I imagine kind of like Walmart, okay? So Nicolene's sitting at the exit of Walmart and it's 11 o'clock and they're closing the doors. So there's um, three different scenarios where people come up and the first person comes up and I imagine him to be a very successful um, guy that knows how, this is the, the buttons, this is not having buttons, okay, I gotta get this in your head because I want you to see this, oh, there are button bleed over, we don't want button bleed over, hmm, sorry, hold on, you're gonna have to be patient with me and my, so getting some markers for my training, okay, so imagine that this first person, he goes to the Walmart, and he has this experience happen to him. He sees that the doors are closed and that he can't go out of the doors that he came into and he says to himself, huh, no big deal. And he turns around and walks the other way. The experience passed right through him and it didn't cause any negative emotion, okay? So there wasn't any buttons there and he had learned to adapt to situations. The second lady comes up and she sees, ugh, the doors are closed. I can't believe it. I have to walk all the way around and blah, blah, blah. And she's thinking in her mind, kind of having an uh, attitude problem. So she has this button that gets triggered. And then she chooses to let the issue pass through and she goes around it. Okay, the third person, actually two women, the third two women go up and they see that the doors are closed and they say, I can't believe this and they start having big attitude problems and they decide to let the whole thing stop them. You can see my picture right here. They decide to let the whole thing stop them. They go into a place of blaming and complaining. I know this is weird. I'm like really close to the camera, but just bear with me because I don't know how else to do this right now. Um, so uh, they hit this button and this button really bad and bad it stops them okay so this is how I see that it happens with us in life um, I've been studying a bunch in my um, I call it my garden school and um, in about a couple years ago I started well maybe about four or five years ago now um, I started learning in my garden and when I learned in my garden there were amazing epiphanies that came to me and this is one of the things that I learned in my garden. It's called the Z model. And over here, this is what happens is there's gradations of dark and light. I show it better on my CD on my website. You can see it there. But the gradations of dark and light, and it goes, this is a space, place of spiritual prison. And then this is a place of spiritual or emotional freedom. Okay, so um, what happened with these experiences and these are the flag words that you want to watch for. I know you can't see this very good. Flag words would be complain, blame. Um, there's all sorts of them. And then the other one is choose, at least the ones I noticed in this article. So on this side of the Z model, we have choose. And on this side of the Z model, we have complain and blame. So if you look at our, our Z model here, when the, the first person came through, he didn't have any issue. There wasn't any buttons and he chose to go that way. He chose to not have a problem with the experience. That was a natural thing that happened in his life. The second situation was when a woman had a button got to get my picture of my button out again. She had a button. She had an experience. Inside of her, she felt negative emotion. And then she chose to let it go out of her. She decided to have self-government over her emotions. That was a choice. Every time that you make this kind of choice, you're going to have more power to make the next choice. It grows up on a scale just like stairs. If you choose here to be able to have a choice and let it go through you and not stop you, then you'll go up to the next scale. If you choose right here, when a negative experience happens, to react to it, then it's going to take you down. It'll take you more into this place of captivity. So um, that was the amazing part that I realized just about those 
those couple three experiences. So when we choose, we go toward the light. Okay, the Z model is a contrast, a representation of the, the model of what happens in life. When we choose to blame, then we go toward the darkness. When we choose to ch take responsibility and make a, a deliberate choice, then we choose to go to the light. So um, the first guy in the story, he didn't have that button inside of him because he had already gained self-mastery. The second person in the story was all, they were still working on their self mastery, but they were working on it. They had a negative experience, they recognized the trigger inside of themselves, and then they chose to go toward the light. They didn't choose to let it stop them. The third people in the story came to the negative experience and they reacted to it. They did not try to stop it, they let it take them over. They indulged in it. Indulgence is another one of those words that you got. It's one of those flag words like complain and blame that you got to watch out for. When you indulge, it's going to take you toward captivity. So those are three different ways that um, we can see ourselves growing up on the scale of self-mastery. We can see that we are either number one, we're totally mastered, we don't have any buttons inside of us, or number two, we have that button, we recognize it, and then we choose to make a deliberate choice not to let it stop us. And then number three is when you're not trying to exercise self-mastery at all. So anyway, that is my short little training for you on removing your buttons. Um, the thing that you can do to remove your buttons, if number one, obviously you don't have any buttons and you're awesome like Nicolene and you don't react negatively to those situations, then congratulations, you can teach the rest of the world how to remove their buttons. Um, the second person is kind of where I am right now. I have those negative buttons inside of me and I am trying to remove them. So this is why this is a lesson that's being pertinent and taught to me right now is because I'm figuring out how to remove these buttons. So. Um, Kirk Duncan actually has a lot of amazing tools that help you remove negative emotion out in to get it out. Nicolene Peck also teaches the four keys of self-government, which is a way of analyzing and figuring out what it is inside of there and making a deliberate plan to be able to move forward and overcome it. I think Nicolene comes from a perspective of um, self-mastery and where she's in this place where she doesn't have buttons at least that's what it seems like to me um, that that might be different from her perspective I'm not sure but um so where was I going with that uh, totally lost my train of thought um, so anyway uh, if you want to get these buttons out of you you need to find tools to be able to get them out I'll just give you one quick tool that I really love using. I, I write when I have um, negative emotion inside of me, but having a calm plan like Nicolene teaches, that's one of the huge things. But before I give you this tool, I'm going to give you one thing that Nicolene teaches is that she teaches to have a calm plan. So in these four keys of self-government, you analyze and figure out what your buttons are, and then when one of them pops up, you say, okay, this is my red flag, this is my negative emotion, this is my negative experience, this is what's happening, and then you choose to act on your plan deliberately and um, to get it out of you. So that's you choosing not to react negatively to the situation. Um, the second, oh, and my calm plan, that's what I was going to talk about. The, one of the things I added to my calm plan this last week, it was so awesome, was I decided to sit down on the couch when I need to calm down and I am memorizing a poem that Nicolene shared last month in our Circles article and I just sit down and I memorize that poem. It's called A Little Kingdom by El Alcott, Elise Alcott, I can't remember the first name. But um, so sh I sit down on my couch and I memorize that. So it's not only helping me to get calm but it's also helping me to connect again to the principles that I need to be able to have self mastery over what I'm fa facing at the moment. So um, the second tool that I wanted to share with you was from Kirk Duncan. He teaches about writing and how to use your writing. Some people I think are talkers and some people I think are writers. And you can decide which one you are. If you're a talker, then you need to go for a drive by yourself, not with anybody else in the car, and you just, you know, get it all out of you. 
if you are a writer, then sit down and use this exercise. So um, you would sit down when you're not ha when you're not being calm and you're having one of those moments of why am I angry? What's going on here? You would sit down and you would say, okay, I need to write a sentence. And the thing that you need to do about this is trust the fact that your heart has answers that you don't know yet. Okay, it's like your subconscious is a sleeping. It's it's like it's sleeping underneath the sea, and your conscious life is what is sticking up like an iceberg out of the water. You can see part of it, but there's a whole big other part that you can't see. So when I go through the writing process, it's as if it's fishing into the sea of my subconscious and it's pulling out those little things that I didn't know were there. I have learned so much about myself this way. This is such an incredible tool. So what I do is I sit down and I write and I trust that the power is in my heart to be able to get it out. And you have your pen and you have your paper and you write down this sentence. Um, and you can you can choose whatever sentence it is you feel you need to work on or whatever but if this were the case with me at this moment when I'm having a problem um, the reason why I had a problem with Allie not wanting to wash the dishes today is because and you write because at the end of your sentence and then you hold your pen make a period at the end of because and you just wait because and then you <clears throat> you just listen and right now is the moment where you don't overanalyze you can't throw it out and say, I can't write that or I can't write that. You just write whatever thoughts come into your mind. You write it all out. It's called a free writing and just get everything out of you. Don't think about it. Just write it. Okay. Trust like pretend your pen is writing and it's not really you. Okay. I know it's kind of weird, but it's really fun. So after you get all done, then you can go back and read it and look at it. And then you can think about it and analyze it and realize, okay, what buttons are inside of me and what do I need to do to be able to get them out? So those are two awesome tools to be able to help you today. I am so excited that you have listened to this to let me share my um, learning moment with you. It's been really fun. So I hope you have a really good day. If you want to connect with me, feel free to look me up on my website. It's at victorykidsmom.com. And also you can connect with me on my Facebook page. I share tons of things that I learned there. And I would love to hear from you the things that you are learning. Because that is the way that we can change the world to learn, apply, and share. Have a great day. Bye.